Hi, welcome back to the Gap Your channel. Today we're going to talk about how you can measure the ripple on your power supplies. If you remember, I did a video earlier about how I measured a whole bunch of different power supplies. In this video, we're going to show you how you can actually do it yourself. Using a very inexpensive sound card like this Focus right here, you can get those about $200 new or even $100 sometimes, it depends on the unit. And how you can build this simple device to protect your sound card from uh, burning and also to protect yourself. Also, you are going to use a software. We are going to use here the software by Roo. REW is an excellent software for you can use it also for setting your speakers and stuff like that but here it's got a nice uh, uh, RTA section which is like a spectrum analyzer and we're going to use that to measure with now optional if you have a uh, frequency generator uh, you will be able to use that to calibrate uh, the uh, RU uh, software. Now, if you don't have a fancy signal generator, you can use a simple uh, volt tester. Uh, I've got a couple here that I use frequently. Next, you're going to need a cookie tin, and uh, these are easy to get uh, thanks to our friends in Denmark. Uh, you need to put your uh, equipment in a very contained area so you don't get external noise, and trust me, noise gets everywhere. When you're measuring down to a microvolt, it's everywhere. We'll start with the uh, Focusrite uh, sound card. You can buy this anywhere. You can get it from Amazon. I'll put a link in my description below if you'd like to support the channel. You can buy, you don't need, I have a two channel version, but you can just get the one channel version and it's fairly inexpensive, just slightly close to $100. And uh, now to protect the sound card, you don't want to by accident send it like, you know, a five volt signal or whatever it is. We're creating a little device uh, here that's going to actually protect the sound card. So we're going to talk about this and how you can do it. This is a easy, can be done, that costs like five, ten dollars to make and it's really simple. I'm going to give you all the parts that you'll need uh, to, to use. And you're going to need a laptop that could run on battery. So this way you can avoid any any noise and also the sound card is going to be connected to that laptop and that's also going to run on its own batteries and then it will be also very low noise. To protect the sound card, we're going to use a box, a metal box, has to make sure it's metal. So, so the blue here is what's, um, what represents the box. And then, so this is the input. So the uh, positive part is gonna go into a fuse, a very small fuse, or 250 milliamps, or even lower you can if you like, uh, a capacitor, this is going to be a 600 volt capacitor, about a half a microfarad. And a couple of diodes, like just a regular inexpensive 4007s. And uh, we're going to have an output, it's going to be an XLR. Because our sound card has an XLR input. So, what's, how does this, how does this uh, schematic work? Is what happens is your, you have DC coming in here. So the capacitor is going to get rid of all the DC and all what's going to go through is a ripple, which is AC. So that's going to go in here. Uh, we're only measuring very low voltage here. So we want to make sure we don't get anything high voltage into our sound card. So we're going to put a couple diodes and uh, opposing each other. So only up to 0.5 volt will be able to go through anything above half a volt will short here and if it shorts really bad you get the fuse here as a protection as well and uh, the output's going to go into the xlr so uh, two and three and one which is ground is going to be attached to the case as well and so is the bnc ground is also attached to the case and it's very important that your case is grounded so you need to run a wire and ground your case because say you're uh, uh, measuring some high voltage stuff and you accidentally reverse the polarity now suddenly you have 400 volts sitting on your case you touch that case and you could die so the parts that you are going to need is a metal box you can get those from an electronic store the one that has a lid and uh, you will also need an XLR 
You'll also need an XLR connector, the male portion of it. You can just buy a cable and just cut the uh, male portion of it, just a little bit short like that. And uh, so I've already installed that here. And you will need a, a capacitor that is around half to microfarad, 2.6, something around there. And that, but it has to have a rating of at least uh, 600 volt because just in case you want to measure some high voltage for say tube amps or anything like that. And uh, you will need uh, two diodes with a drop of voltage. Anything higher than 0.4 volt will, will do. And you will need a small fuse, about 250 milliamps or 100 milliamps, somewhere around there, low value, and a BNC connector to go on the other side. So you'll drill a hole here, you'll put the XLR on this side, and on this side you are going to put the BNC connector. You are also going to need a little terminal. I'm using a little speaker terminal here for ground, something that has a screw at the end. We're going to put a little hole and screw this on the, this side and so we can ground the box. So here you can see uh, the final product and this is a close-up uh, version. You can see all the components, the diodes, the capacitor, the fuse and how it's all connected. You can pause the screen and have a good look at it. And uh, this is the other side where you can see the ground terminal. So you can actually connect the ground either. It's kind of like a speaker terminal actually. You can put a wire or you can actually plug in a banana plug. Next, you're going to need a cookie tin, and uh, these are easy to get uh, thanks to our friends in Denmark. Uh, so you don't get external noise, and trust me, noise gets everywhere. When you're measuring down to a microvolt, it's everywhere. And to demonstrate, just touching the probe here with just my fingers, look how much noise that generates about basically one millivolt, just touching it with my bare fingers. As soon as I take it off, it drops down again. On the computer side, uh, so basically what we have here is the uh, Focusrite sound card connects via USB-C to the uh, computer. Now bear in mind, the computer is running on battery power and this is critical to keep the low noise. And also the Focusrite is connected via the computer, so it's also running on battery as well. And uh, so, and that's key because now we can actually, this is a base level of my noise level, and you could see that it's actually uh, below the one, quite below the one microvolt. So it's important that your equipment that you're testing with can, is not noisy, because if your noise level is starting with 10 microvolts, you're not going to be able to measure anything less than that. So the way this thing works is you get the uh, output from the power supply coming through the tin box. It's going to go into uh, this little device. It's just going to keep things safe so it won't let anything more than uh, half a volt go through so we don't burn our power supply. And this one plugs in via XLR into the Focusrite sound card. And from here it all goes into the computer. So that was the hardware part. Now let's look at the software part. For that you're going to need a software called Roo and you can get it, uh, download it from the internet for free. You're welcome to support them if you find it helpful but you don't have to if you don't want to. So we're going to open up uh, Roo. So here it is. So I uh, launched Roo. Uh, I am running version 5.2. Um, so you're going to see a preference wrench here, so you click on that. What you want to do is, in case this is not 96, make sure you select 96 kilohertz sample rate. The output device, you want to select the focus right, because that's what we, the audio, the sound card that we have. Um, make sure, in my case, I'm using all left channels, so because I have two microphone inputs and two outputs, so I'm going to use both left if it's selected right, so make sure you change it to left, uh, unless you want to use the right channel, it's up to you. But uh, stick to one channel all around, and for the input, uh, so it's a default, you're going to again select your focus rate or your sound card. And again, it's going to be on the left channel, and that's going to be all left channel, everything is on left. So that's 
pretty much for this part. Now to uh, calibrate the uh, RU software, we need to tell it uh, what is, for example, 10 millivolt. And so the RU software uses RMS figure for it's important to understand what is RMS, what is peak to peak voltage and regular voltage and all that stuff. So when you look at your generator, often it will say peak to peak. On the signaling generator it's easy. You can just uh, punch in the number. You say, I want 10, and uh, you can say millivolt RMS or millivolt peak to peak. I'm going to pick here millivolt RMS and voila, it's 10 volt RMS. So now it's 10 volt RMS. You don't have to get all confused and do any um, formulas. If you do not have the capability to have an output in RMS, and you're only stuck with say volt peak to peak, you can convert that using a simple formula. Now, if you don't have a fancy signal generator, you can use a simple uh, volt tester. Uh, I've got a couple here that I use frequently. And if you notice, uh, they both say on them uh, true RMS. As you can see here, true RMS, same here. So make sure you're using a proper voltmeter, not just any cheap kind. Um, I mean, these are not expensive, but they are good uh, uh, voltmeter. I'll put a link of them in my description below if you like to support the channel. But um, the main uh, story here is you can use your phone to uh, download an app and get a signal generator that way. There's a lot of free apps that do that. And then you just measure the voltage that's coming out of your phone. And just uh, if it's too high, you can put some resistors like uh, uh, to tone it down and basically just use your imagination to get some uh, decent uh, certain voltage so you can calibrate with. So you, what you want to do is you're going to go into the RTA section, which is like the spectrum analyzer section of the software. Just when you go into the first time here, usually this defaults to DBFS. If it is, just click on that little arrow and select a volt. We want to go into volt here. And uh, now the reason the, the noise is higher because this computer is still running on plugged into the power. If I unplug it, this is from here, notice how the sound is going to get much lower. We are down to half a microvolt sound uh, noise. You're going to click on that record button and automatically you should see that we've got a peak here on the one kilohertz sine wave close to 10 millivolts, but it's not exactly 10, more like seven, six. So what we're going to do, we're going to press calibrate. And this is where you actually put in the, so you put your uh, 10 millivolts that your uh, signal generator is sending and you're going to say calibrate and automatically it's going to show you that it's at 10 millivolts. So now the software knows what 10 millivolts is. And the reason we picked 10 millivolts is because we want a value that's closer to the microvolt and not too far, you know, you don't want to pick like one volt because the margin of error will become quite large. So a 10 millivolt, I think, is a good value that's somewhere between what most uh, power supply ripples are. And now it's important to not just judge it on the one kilohertz. We're going to change the frequency uh, to make sure that it keeps tracking. So that's two kilohertz uh, of sine wave. You can see three. Now the focus right is a very good amplifier, and it's actually you know fairly linear, so it tracks nicely. Let's see. For example, this is uh, ten uh, kilohertz uh, wave. Actually, it's. That's 10 was 11 and just keep going. Let's try for example, 20. Yeah, so you can see it actually tracks nicely across the entire uh, spectrum. One disadvantage of this setup is that it's only uh, sensitive up to like 25, 30 K kilohertz, basically. After that, it's not really that efficient. And uh, it's just, I think it's because the sound card has filters, maybe up to like 20 something K. So if you are trying to measure, for example, a, uh, a digital uh, power supply, like basically a switching power supply, and you're trying to get, you know, some of the high frequencies, like in the 100 kilohertz and what's not, then it's not gonna be useful uh, 
to get uh, to measure the noise in that particular uh, frequency range. But if we are using a linear power supply, most of the time it doesn't have any digital structure, so this will do just fine. So once you have it calibrated, you're ready to measure. But like I said, it's important to make sure that you're sending a value in RMS to the software. That's what the software is expecting. Otherwise your calibration will be quite off. Once you have everything figured out, you are now ready to start measuring some power supplies. I actually made a video about how to measure a whole bunch of power supplies and measure the ripple down to less than one microvolt. I'll put a link of this video in this corner here. In this corner here, there'll be a video about my Gapster uh, TD1 DAC, which is pretty awesome uh, DAC. It's got an exceptional sound. And there'll be a speaker in the middle if you'd like to subscribe. My Patreon is in the link below if you'd like to uh, support the channel further and learn a few things. Take care and I hope to see you again.